Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Minister, for, for being here today. I want to start out uh, by talking about Canary, which is the, uh, it's a high-speed uh, internet uh, backbone, which is very important for researchers uh, across the country. Uh, and there's a line uh, on page uh, 91 of the supplementary estimates uh, for Canary. Um, and as you know, Minister, the funding for Canary has gone down a bit in the last uh, 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 in this year compared to previous years. And I want to read from a press release from Canary from August 8, 2012, uh, where they say, and, and this will be no surprise to you, in confirming the $22 million in funding for the third year of the mandate, the government also reaffirmed a requirement for Canary to explore and implement cost-sharing strategies with its user community. And I want to note uh, further on in the press release where it says about Canary, it talks about its uh, its uh, user community, and, and amongst the user community, we have universities, colleges, hospitals. So my question for you, Minister, is whether you will kind of tap Canary on the shoulder and say, uh, please don't download my government's budget cuts onto universities, colleges, and hospitals. And I'm just wondering if, um, you know, just ask them to be careful about how they uh, go about implementing the cost-sharing uh, strategies that they have to uh, implement because of the cuts to their, to their budget. Well, actually, and I appreciate the question very much, uh, Ted. The fact is that uh, we consult, as I've mentioned before, with uh, all the stakeholders we can possibly talk to. It's almost all I do when I'm not in the House answering questions in QP is phone uh, presidents of universities, uh, deans of research. We have roundtables. Folks come to Ottawa and I meet with them. And I met with the Canary people and I specifically asked them, um, do they need all of this funding? We have an obligation uh, to Canadians to be more efficient in these difficult times. And the Canary people were very kind, had that team spirit, were quite willing to work with, uh, with the rest of Canadians who want to see uh, a more efficient governance. And they were the ones, in fact, that suggested to me they could do with less, number one. Number two, it makes perfect sense that when you have a product that people need and want, that some of them should uh, pay for it. That not everything in life is free. I know you might want to say that that would be our universities and our students and these poor researchers. That's exactly not who it is. That in fact there are users of this incredible network that have the ability to pay something for it and it just makes sense that the Canadian taxpayers could have a bit of a break and they could pay a little bit more to it. So we will very carefully okay. and, and, and you know, you'll, you'll be careful about the universities we will and the hospitals. Indeed. Okay, that's, that's all I want to know. That's all I want to know, <laughs> Minister. Uh, my second question is about uh, an announcement uh, that you made on November the 13th, uh, which I think was a, was a good announcement. It was $17 million over five years for the college and community uh, innovation program. And I note that one of the grants that's available under that program is the, the Applied Research Tools and Instruments uh, uh, grants. And uh, so, great. I mean, if you like, uh, if you like uh, money to, to, for colleges uh, uh, to purchase research tools and instrumentation, uh, you'll also know that researchers are upset about the cuts to the research tools and instrumentation program of NSERC. Um, and these would be university researchers. And in fact, last night I was talking to some engineers uh, who you know do applied research, and they were expressing uh, to me how upset they were. If you like the applied research tools and instruments grants for the college and community innovation program, why not provide the funds to NSERC so that it doesn't have to cut back on its own uh, the main research tools and instrumentation program? Well, as you do know, this year alone we provided NSERC with an additional 15 million dollars, 200 million additional dollars to NSERC since 2006. The program that you're talking about, and I, I know you know this, uh, Ted, averages approximately $100,000 per institute. There's about 37 institutes in this that draw on that program. The federal contribution is very small. It's about 15%, which means they have other partners, multiple partners. And as much as I guess we would all like to fund everybody all the time and forever, Difficult decisions have to be made. NSERC chose to chose this program. As I said in my opening remarks, my instructions were we would protect basic discovery science and fellowships, in other words, people. This, is, this was an area that was offered up, and uh, it is what it is. 
and, and all I want to point out is that in terms of, I know we have to cut certain things, and but in terms of priorities, I think I think scientists and engineers and other researchers have have really spoken out quite loudly about their concern uh, about the cuts to to um, RTI. Let, let me go on to my last question, uh, Minister, uh, and that is about uh, the uh, the number in the supplementary <coughs> estimates for uh, NRC, roughly 61 million dollars. Uh, for refocusing the work at, at NRC, and I understand the, uh, the idea behind it. Uh, but I, I am concerned about, and, and this is, doesn't just come from me, it comes from people that I talk to, uh, concerned about uh, the, the time it's taking to sort out uh, what all the uh, programs, and you'll know what I mean by programs, it's the new way that the, uh, <clears throat> the research work at, at NRC is being organized. Uh, for example, in the engineering division, uh, only two programs, and those are the two flagship programs, as of a couple of weeks ago, uh, have reached the, the final approved program. There's four steps to approving a program. Only two of these programs have reached um, the final approval. Uh, and my concern is that there, are, there will be people, a lot of people in NRC kind of waiting and to see what happens. And while they're waiting, their research is not part of any approved program. Uh, most of them, I think, are really love their research and continuing to, to work on what they're working on. Uh, my question to you is, are you concerned at all uh, about the, uh, the pace at which these programs are being set up and approved? And uh, have you talked to the management at NRC about any concerns that you might have? And this, this connects a little, little bit with Mr. Stewart's question. And let me just Mr. add Mr. if you want an answer, it has to be, you have to let the minister answer. We have to, like 20 seconds. Okay, I'll let the minister answer. Thank you. Uh, just very quickly, yes, of course, I talked to the management at the NRC. We have had meetings uh, very, very frequent, frequently, uh, especially of late. Uh, Are you happy I, with the Indeed, I wish it would go faster, but I have to respect that this is a major undertaking. This is a 100-year-old organization. It has 400 contracts around the world. It has over 4,000 scientists. It isn't something that we could nor should we uh, change in haste. Thank we are you. consulting with stakeholders and doing the job right the first time. Thank you very much.